What is a one in a million thing that happened to you that will never happen again? Was at Dave and Buster's for a friend's wedding reception probably 10 or so years ago. I wanted to play skee ball. I'm not really good or anything. Just liked playing and their machines were in really nice shape. Get $5 in tokens. And the very first game I got a bunch of 100s and ended up beating the score to win the jackpot. I had like 860 points or something. Flashing lights. Siren going off. Everyone looking at me. It takes about 5 minutes for all the tickets to spit out of the machine. It was a giant pile on the floor. Meanwhile, I just wanted to play some skee ball. It finishes and the teenager minding the counter climbs up to the top and resets the jackpot counter. I put in another token and wham. Did it again. Bunch of 100s. Another jackpot. Much less this time. The kid working gives me this look like I cheated. You can't play anymore. I gave all the tickets to my friend's daughter and she went on a shopping spree. As many rubber balls and plastic trinkets to last her a lifetime. When I was younger the first time I had ever been to Dave and Labusters I was doing like some electronic fishbowl plinko and I got the 2500 ticket jackpot first try, it was a luck game but still, I ended up getting a very soft and big stuffed animal, I actually still have it. I took a job in a somewhat remote area of northeast China about 20 years ago, I had two roommates, one American and one Canadian. And we were part of just a handful of foreigners out of about 2 million Chinese in that area. Fast forward 10 years and I'm back in the USA. I was dating a girl who was going on a girl's trip to Mexico. She and her girlfriends went out to a bar and got to talking with another group of people. One of the guys there started showing photos from his travels and lo and behold, there I am. He was my roommate from China a decade before and while chatting with these girls decided to share the pictures of his travels. After a few of those prove that you know him questions they both flipped out. Small world. I stuck my hand out the window to feel if it was still raining and a bird shat right on it. Never doing that again. That bird was talking to, to his friends later that night like. So I'll let one loose while flying and when I looked down, it landed on some random hand stuck out a window. What are the odds? Definitely doing that again. I was about to fall off the staircase at our flat but my reflexes kicked in and I was able to do a handspring and flip forward to land on my feet. It won't happen again and I sure hope I don't come close to falling like that. Once as a kid I was running down a steep hill, tripped. Did a full flip and landed on my feet still in mid stride without even slowing or losing my rhythm. It was so fast and smooth I still question if it even happened sometimes. I don't know the actual stats but I won one of those gold PS4 sets back when Taco Bell was doing their sweepstakes. I won a PS4 from a sketchy video game history quiz and they shipped it all the way from India. I have no idea what company even sent it, only that to this day the PS4 still holds up and it's been like 4 years of near constant use. I was playing beer pong years ago. Definitely passed my limit on drinks. This really pretty girl shows up to the party and asks how to play beer pong. I start explaining the rules and when I got to trick shot, she asked what they were. Never breaking eye contact, I threw my ball up, which hit the ceiling fan blades, which were going at full speed, and went straight into a cup. After laughing for 10 minutes, we all tried to recreate the hole in one, never even slightly close. I was doing a hike in Maui, and at the top of the hike was a large waterfall on a sheer cliff face. The moment I got to the waterfall, I heard this earth shaking rumbling. I could feel the sound, kind of like heavy bass through speakers. When I looked up at the waterfall, a couple of huge rocks were falling down. If I had been a minute faster on the hike I would have been right below those rocks as they were falling. Terrifying but also breathtaking to see the power of nature. That's like some Final Destination stuff right there. I bet you were crapping your pants when you realized that could have been the end. One time I pointed at the sky one night and told my little brother watch this and a freaking shooting star came and went. Dude, when I was young me and my good friend were looking and were talking about shooting stars and saw one right away. It was wild. Ran into passenger doing a street performance in Adelaide promoting his new album in 2015. Two weeks later I ran into him again doing another street performance in Sydney. I did not know of either of these performances before just stumbling upon them. 
I had a boyfriend in high school tell me of this man he met in Florida who called himself Backpack Jesus and said he planned to walk across the country. A couple years later I meet a kid from California and he tells me he met a guy on the beach in California who called himself Backpack Jesus and just walked across the country. Sucker actually did it. I fell off my loft bed, did a midair flip and landed on a corn cob and got a corn cob shaped bruise on my hip. So close. I was struck by lightning. 22nd story of John Hancock Tower in Boston. The big glass one, through a conference room window. The storm was very pretty, but I don't go near windows during storms anymore. I bought a house in a small town in Ohio about 2 hours from Columbus. My wife and I decided to go to a random Ohio State game since we have never been and got tickets off StubHub. When we got there, we ended up sitting next to the people we bought our house from. My husband and I met in our late 30s in Indianapolis, Indiana, both living there. We were born in the same hospital, and lived in the same housing addition as children in Riverside, California, and our fathers worked together. I kicked a basketball into my basketball net from roughly 50 feet away. My driveway is on a 40 degree angle so the ball came rolling back. On my second attempt I shattered one of the windows on my garage door. Was smoking outside a hotel in a place a few cities over from me. Homeless man comes and asks me if I can buy him some food. Got to talking over some cheesy chips. Homeless guy was my estranged cousin. Not quite me but my dad. He was diagnosed his a brain tumor about a year and a half ago. The doctors said he literally won the lottery of brain tumors. It was a meningioma, right on top of his brain right under the skull. They got 99.99% of it out so it would be a real surprise if it grew back. I cut a fly in half while it was flying with a set of scissors. I do have witnesses. I was more surprised than anyone. It's dangerous to have flies flying around with scissors, you should always try to take the scissors off them. Not quite one in a million. Won a car in a newspaper competition. Picked out of 82,000 entries though colon. That's pretty good. I won a solid chocolate football at the liquor store once. I was standing outside listening to my friend tell me how he had been fired earlier that day. He had just finished the story and said so yay, man. Been a rough day, when a bird pooped right on his head. It's hilarious and depressing at the same time. Now I feel guilty laughing. Hope your friend has a cool job now. Ray my Malek spoke to me while we both were eating dinner sitting at the bar. He said my Noki looked good. I read, your Noki looks good in his voice and I can't stop laughing. Ran into a neighbor from when I was a kid in a small Canadian town, in Belgium. I was paid $20 by a sheriff that pulled me over for a broken headlight. I knew it was out and hadn't had time to fix it. I had one left over from replacing the other side a month prior. I let him know this when he pulled me over. Turns out someone in the county donated $300 for these kinds of incidents and he still gave me $20 even though he knew I had one. There's a program around here where cops will give you a gift certificate for $20. I tried 3 different auto parts stores and none of them would take the thing so I just spent the 3 bucks on a new light bulb. I was cutting vegetables in my kitchen and a fly was buzzing around my head so I swung around with the knife in my hand and sliced the fly clean in half. It could happen again if only you study the blade. Was at the Texas American Legion convention a few years ago. They had been selling tickets all week for door prizes as a fundraiser. I was talking to someone when they called the first number and got a winner. While the winner is going up on stage to get his prize the guy I am talking to says I better get my tickets out and they may call my numbers. I pulled 5 tickets out of my pocket and tore one off. I said don't bother they're going to call this one next. They did. I won a stupid baseball cap. Really? Freak event like that and I get a ball cap dang. I was in Vegas. Playing roulette. Being somewhat drunk and a bit of a goof. I was saying I was psychic, and that the next number was going to be 17. It hit. There was some groaning, but I'm an amiable guy, so it was good humored. I then predicted that it was going to be 17 again, my psychic vision said so. Hit again. Haha, ha, it was hilarious. Third spin, yeah. 17 again, boys. My vision was clear. 
hit again the whole table was silent, you could hear a pin drop. I'm thinking that was a one-off type of thing, though the odds aren't quite one in a million. I ran into Bill Murray at the Dallas Art Museum on a school trip, and he gave me wrong directions to the Asia exhibit. This sounds like the best possible answer he could have given to me. I met my wife for Chinese food at a time when we were living separate and she had already served me papers for divorce. We both opened our fortune cookies. Mine said, you have a lot to offer to the right person. Hers said, give him another chance. I saw the first hint of consideration in her eyes. We ended up not divorcing and I'm happy 12 years later. Dang how much did you pay them to do that? I was substitute teaching a gym class. The class was sitting at the three point line. I was facing them, telling them what we were doing that day. Had a basketball on my hip. Kid raised his hand. I bet you can't even shoot a basketball. I stared at him and tossed it backwards over my head with one hand. They howled in shock. Apparently it went in. I never broke eye contact with a kid. Alright. Line up. Cool cats don't look back. Bruh. Once upon a time, my brother and I were arriving late at night to a little cabin in the woods. It was winter, it was pitch black outside, and it was freezing. We needed to get a fire lit ASAP, but the firewood was stacked outside the back of the cabin, under the porch. Now, my brother and I used to watch a lot of horror movies together, and again, it was the middle of the night, at a cabin in the woods. It was winter, and it was freaking freezing and pitch black outside. We decided to flip a nickel to see who would venture out to get the firewood. And here's the part that answers the question. The nickel landed on its side. Nobody went under the porch that night. Monsters hate nickels. The power went out in my house. So I walked into the living room and said to my family why are you sitting in the dark knowing there was no power. As I said it I flipped the light switch just as the power came back on. Imagine them not sitting there anymore. Meeting David Lynch and Isabella Rossellini at a Denny's in Emeryville, CA. One day when I was walking around downtown where I live when I found some money on the ground. It was pretty windy that day and I saw what looked like a bill coming towards me so I did my best to catch it. When I finally got it, it turned out to be a $100 bill. Not a crazy story, but it made feel like that bill came specifically to me for some reason. I don't know if it is one in a million, but my wife started leaking amniotic fluid at 21 weeks. They told us there was nothing they could do for the baby. We were so anguished at the thought of losing him. The fluid was very low and she was constantly leaking. They wouldn't even admit us to a hospital until she was 23 weeks. It was about 10 days out. It was the longest 10 days of our life. We were going to the doctor constantly just for them to monitor and get a sonogram. The day before she hits 23 weeks my wife says she doesn't feel like she is leaking anymore. Our fear is that she has ran out of amniotic fluid. On the morning of 23 weeks we go to the doctor and get a sonogram. The plan all along was as soon as we hit 23 weeks. We go to the doctor's office to confirm fluid level. And then they were going to send us to the hospital straight from there. Somehow the amniotic sac that was ruptured has sealed. To everyone's surprise, the fluid was back to normal range. We are all in shock. The doctor tells us to just take it easy and we can head home. My wife delivers our son at full term with no health issues. Everyone at the hospital tells us how lucky we are to have the amniotic sac seal. After the birth the doctor tells me that in the 40 plus years of delivering babies, he could count the number of times on one hand that he has seen amniotic sac ruptures heal. I don't know the odds. But I do know my wife and I are incredibly lucky to have our little man. He is 10 months old today as well. Attended Linkin Park concert. Managed to get right on the barricade. And while singing in the end I had both my hands up in the air. Both Mike Shinoda and Chester Bennington jumped on top of the barricade fence held my hands to keep their balance. For about 20 seconds I felt like a rock star. I was upgraded to first class for free 10 minutes before boarding. I've always wondered how that happens honestly. Bit of context. I have lived in Sweden for the last two and a bit years with my soon to be wife. I am originally from Wales, UK. I went to Stockholm to visit a friend for her birthday party. Pretty fun. 
On the way back home on the train an old man is sat next to me talking to his wife who was sitting on a chair directly in front of him. He was speaking in Swedish so I asked him if he would like me to swap seats with his wife so we could sit together. I noticed in his response that he had a Welsh twang to his accent. I asked if he was Welsh and he said yes. Turns out he grew up in the same area as my father and went to the same school. I was amazed at the coincidence and say fairly loudly it's crazy that the first Welsh person I meet in Sweden is from a small town where my father grew up. At this point a guy from the other side of the carriage stands up walks towards me and says hi I'm xxxx this freaked me out because we have the same name. Turns out it gets weirder. Not only do we share a very uncommon name we also went to the same school and weirdest of all his best friend is my best friend's big brother and there have been times when we have been in the same house together but never interacted beyond basic. Greetings. This really freaked me out. Anyway if you have any questions feel free to ask. I have alopecia universalis so I'm never going to grow hair again. Plus side I'll never lose it again either. Before Google, I am old. Deal with it. When I was in college, I was trying for about 12 hours one day to remember the name of the instrument you use to take your blood pressure. Sphygmomanometer. I was obsessing about still when I went to pick up beer for a party that night. The store didn't have the beer I wanted so I grabbed some random seasonal mix pack. Helped myself to one when I arrived at the party and opened the bottle only to find that the bottle caps had riddles and trivia on them and mindset pressures on on the top and sphygma manometer on the inside. I've had weird moments like that, and it really makes you wonder about the universe. A wasp flew through my bedroom window one day. I reacted by kicking it across the room and out the window. I was driving behind a large truck which threw up a rock from its tire. Cringing in anticipation as I hope my windshield isn't damaged. I feel a sharp pain on top of my head. I found the piece of gravel stuck in my hair on top of my head. Came over the car and fell through the moonroof. I can't help but feel the two are related. Out in a boat on a lake trying to catch fish. Not having any luck. See an osprey dive out of a tree into the water. Osprey comes up with a fish and starts to fly away. A bald eagle dives out of another tree and attacks the osprey in mid-flight. Osprey drops the fish. Eagle continues to rip into the osprey. Pretty cool right? Not over yet. A huge raven drops out of a third tree. Plucks the falling fish out of midair. And flies away with it. No one believes this story. I mean it is a fish story right? I'll never see that again. Dang smart raven. A. Eh? My cousin had kids with this woman I only met once. She lives in Boston. He lives in Jamaica. I live in New York City. One morning I was running late from work and decided to take an alternate route. I got so confused and stressed out transferring to different trains I got myself lost and ended up at the stop going to the ferry, which is ridiculously far from where I was headed. Anyway, I was walking on the platform toward the map and this small kid runs up to me and jumps into a hug. I'm confused. I look up, and it's my cousin's baby's mother, and his three kids. On Thaya first trip to Nick. To the Statue of Liberty. I was in my small high school's band and my senior year we marched through Disney World. Various high schools are selected to do this on a regular basis, but we only went once in my 4 years. About 20 years later I returned to Disney World with my kids. On the first day we were at the park. Within the first hour there, my high school marching band came marching down the street. I bumped into my teacher on Thunder Mountain in Disney World. We're from Boston. I ran into a teacher from my high school on the street when I was in Singapore for a day, layover on the way to India. We're from Canada. One time during a thunderstorm, I was looking out my window, and I saw lightning strike the electric wires, and blue streaks of electricity shot down the wires. It was incredible to see. I woke up one morning well rested and refreshed. I went to college in a major city with public transit. My city also has a big homeless mental health issue, as the trains are relatively cheap and men are run 24 stroke 7. Unfortunately, the mentally ill tend to use it as shelter. I was riding to work early one morning when a young, obviously homeless, man approached me. I thought he was going to ask for money. Instead, once he stopped in front of me, he reached down and hugged me. I was 19 years old at the time. It was gross. 
He wouldn't let go. I promptly clonked him over the head with my water bottle. Eventually he let go and walked away. I thought about calling the police, but they never come in this city. Five years later, I was taking the train again. A man approached me, and something about the situation felt familiar. I looked up, and sure enough, it was the aggressive hugging man. I recognized him right away. We've been through this before, I said. Do not hug me. The aggressive hugging man got the memo, and left me alone, but then began approaching other women on the train, trying to hug them. I had enough, and decided to report it to the police. They didn't come, as expected, so I stopped by the station. The detective I spoke to showed me some pictures. Apparently this man had randomly grabbed hugged 75 other women back when I first encountered him in a period of a few weeks, most of who were underage. He spent some time in jail, but was apparently back at it. The next time I saw him I gave him my friend's business card, who is a social worker, and this dude now has housing, a part time job, and I don't think he's going around hugging random women anymore. My guess is he wanted to go to jail for housing and food but didn't want to cause any harm, so he just hugged people until he was thrown in jail. Reddit, what was your best I could never do that again if I tried it a million times moment? I was taping some tracing wire to a natural gas line we were installing, when I pulled the wire tight, it snapped against the pipe, and I ended up hitting a wasp that was on the pipe, perfectly beheading it. Comma beheading. I ran out of gas while driving full speed once, and managed to coast over a mile and come to a stop right at a gas pump. I had a lot on my mind, I was going through a divorce, and simply didn't think about filling the gas tank. I didn't even notice I was out of gas until I felt that the acceleration was no longer working. I turned down my music just in time to hear the engine sputter out. I quickly popped my car into neutral, turned on the hazard lights, and began coasting as long as I could. By the time I reached the gas station I was going about 4 miles per hour, and had just enough momentum to make it up the embankment and to the pump. I didn't even break until my gas cap was adjacent to the nozzle. Freshman year of high school I was talking to a friend walking in the hallway chewing gum. Gum flew out of my mouth accidentally. I panicked and kicked my foot hacky sack style, and kicked the gum right back into my mouth. My friend said it was gross to keep chewing the foot gum but I said it was an act of God. God wanted me to have long lasting flavor, Denise. I was playing kickball in my neighborhood street with a bunch of friends and a few cute girls around. I was always pretty good, so people always backed up when I was kicking. I got pitched the ball, and when I kicked it, it soared into the air, up the street, and straight into my friend's basketball hoop. It was a good 35 yards away. The sound it made was the best swish I've ever heard. To this day I have never made that shot again. I was sitting in a bar one time next to a pool table. The guy knocked the cue ball off, knocked the beer out of my hand, but I caught the ball. All was good. The guy bought me another round. I was playing mini golf and we got to a hole that was in the corner of the course. The hole was an L shape and you had to get the ball in one of two pipes and the pipes were at right angles following the L shape. The pipes would let the ball out and you would try to get in from where the ball exited the pipe. It was impossible to get a hole in one because the pipes wouldn't let the ball out near the hole and there was a block between the entrance of the pipes and the exit of the pipes. So I go and I end up hitting the ball in the air and it bounces off this tree that was in the corner of the course and it bounced over the pipes and I got a hole in one. I'm probably the only one to ever get a hole in one in that hole. I was playing beer pong with some friends at the shore. The ball got a dent in it, so I, thinking I'm hot crap, try the old lighter trick to pop the dent out. Well, as it turns out, if you get the lighter too close the ball catches on fire rather quick. So instead of dropping the ball or blowing it out, I tossed the ball and sank the final cup with a flaming ball of glory. It may not be a one in a million shot, but it sure felt like one. I was shooting at 2 liter bottles in New Hampshire with a BB gun with little success. I decided I'd gangster things up a bit and turned the gun to the side and fired. I hit the bottle at just the right spot so that the BB bounced back and hit me in the forehead. Also one time my cousin threw a boomerang and it came back and hit him in the forehead. We have big foreheads. I was playing baseball when I was around 10 I think I was playing first base and I wasn't paying attention and all of a sudden, 
A ball landed in my glove without me realizing. The pitcher threw it and the batter hit a line drive straight to me. I will never be able to do that again. I was miles away from home. I crossed the road behind a bus, when a car came down the other side of the road and nearly knocked me over. I was okay, the car was braking. I hadn't looked where I was walking and just popped out behind the bus, so I expected the owner of the car to yell at me. I looked up and lo and behold it was my dad, driving home from some shop. It must have been a million to one odds that it was him as I live in quite a large city. P.S. I learned my lesson about crossing behind buses. I flipped a coin in my garage and it got stuck in the rafters. I walked away disappointed. Five days later, I was walking to my car and it fell down into the shoe I was wearing. I had my phone connected to its charging cord once. I was holding it and accidentally dropped it. The cord caught on the corner of my end table, making the phone do an Indiana Jones style vine swing on the cord. Then when it reached the apex of its swing, it detached from the cord, spun in the air, and landed upright in the seat of my chair, facing me. I actually thought it was sentient for a second. I'm very glad this will never happen again. I was walking into the pool room of a pub to join my friend sitting in the corner. As I opened the door, time slowed down. I noticed in exquisite detail just how the person taking their shot mucked it up, sending the ball flying. I saw the perfect parabola of the cue ball in the air, tracing the curve of its majestic flight right into my nuts. That was beautiful, man. I was waitressing and one evening when carrying out food, I tripped and fell. One plate just dropped all over the floor smashing into a million pieces of food and china. The other plate slid across the floor and came to a stop right next to the foot of the customer who had ordered that meal. In middle school my friends and I were joking around. I forget what exactly about, but for some reason I had said something about hiding a body in a locker and turned to the nearest locker, the kind with the combination lock built in, and playfully tried to open it up as part of the joke. I randomly twisted the lock and pulled the handle and the dang thing just opened, and inside was a black garbage bag with something big inside. I was completely floored by my dumb luck. They thought I planned it. I was acting in a play, and whipped my head to the right to react to what another character was saying. This was something I did every night in rehearsals, but for some reason on opening night, my glasses shot right off my face. They just went flying. I have no idea how, but I immediately caught them with my already outstretched right hand. The audience ate it up. They applauded, like this was a tricky maneuver I had practiced every night, but it was literally something I could never do again. Two minutes later, I whipped my head to the left to react to another character, and the glasses went airborne again, smacking the actress in the face and falling behind a prop so that they could not be easily recovered. I want you to know that because of this I picked up a pair of cheap aviator knockoffs, bend the frames to fit loose and have spent the last 15 minutes perfecting this maneuver. I believe I was 13 years old at the time, so this was approximately 10 years ago. I was fishing off the dock of my parents beach house. I went to cast and released the fishing line into the air. A seagull was flying by at the exact time and the hook got attached the bird. I caught a metherfracking seagull with my fishing rod. I tried to reel the seagull in to remove the hook from its mouth. But the bird was having none of that. It was kinda like flying a kite. Until I decided to cut the fishing line. Years ago I was ice skating when I saw a group of my school friends. They were obviously there for the first time and kind of shuffle sliding out to the center of the rink in a group of four without taking their feet off the ice. I was still new at this too and not very good but I skated over to say hello. As I came up in front of them I realized I was going too fast and tried to slow down and overbalanced. I fell forward with my hand out. The heel of my hand landed on the ice and I did a perfect circle about 8 foot wide around it with my skates opposed to each other before I managed to remove my hand and stand upright again. The show off one of my friends grumbled. I was playing dodgeball. And you know how there's always that group of girls who just stays at the back and talks cause they don't want to get hit. Well on the other team there was this blob of like 6 girls and I threw a dodgeball and it bounced between 2 of them. Only for a third to try and catch it and instead knock it into the air hitting yet another one. Freakin' quadra kill. The first time I ever played 2048 I won. I thought that was incredibly easy, and didn't play a game for a while. 
Since then it has become increasingly popular, and I realize that what I had done was actually quite a feat. I've since played countless times and am convinced that given a million tries I will never win again. I was walking into the men's room whilst chewing gum and realized I didn't want the gum anymore. I spat the gum out and kicked it midair into a tiny ass bin at least 10 meters away. It made me feel like Zlatan. This is my single greatest achievement in life. When I was just a young lad I was eating a meatball when my friend said something funny. A chunk of meatball about the size of a small marble was thrust from my nose like a cannon. My friend's dog caught the meaty marble midair and ate it. I peeked early. Sounds more like the dog's achievement than yours. Sorry. When I was in high school, I was talking to a friend in the gym after school, while chewing gum. She turned her head while I was talking, and just as she did, I accidentally spit my gum directly at her temple. I snapped my hand out in front of me, caught the gum, and put it back in my mouth. Just as she turned back to me, didn't notice at all, I silently applauded my sudden onset spidey reflexes, and went on with the convo. I kicked a volleyball into a trash can about 100 feet away, there were witnesses. Casually dropped two coins on a table, when the one coin started spinning on top of the other, slowing down to a halt, still standing sideways. I've tried to do it again, but it is absolutely impossible. 4am, I'm hungry, so I go to Dunkin Donuts, I grab whatever money I have in the car, turns out to be $4.63, so I go, make my usual order completely oblivious that I have no money, the register shows my total, $4.63 freaking cents, I just emptied my hand to the dude at the counter, he knows what just happened and gives me a nod of approval, I drive away with my donuts and wraps like a meth African boss. I was carrying two punnets of raspberries to the counter in the supermarket when the top one slid off and fell. It rotated 360 degrees and I dropped to my knees and caught it on the top of the remaining punnet. I got a house under contract to buy it at 42k. On the drive back to my office I stopped to let a farmer know that one of his cows was out of the fence by the highway. He thanked me and saw my shirt that said I buy houses. He asked me if I had any houses for sale. I said yes. It was the one I had just gotten under contract. Sold it to him for 60k. I made 15k in about 3 hours of work. Two things for me. First, I was driving on the highway after a very bad winter storm. Lots of ice. My car started doing the wiggle. Next thing I know I am spinning. I screened out of reflex and saw the guy driving in the car next to me with his, oh shocked face. I landed perfectly straight and kept going. I'll never forget the dude's face and never forget the pair of pants I lost that day. Second, playing World Series Baseball on Sega Genesis. I'm thinking 1994-1995, my cousin was kicking my butt. He had the bases loaded and was down by 1 point, 0 outs. Hits a line drive and I made my shortstop dive for it, but instead of diving forward he did this dive where his body was facing the wrong direction so he sort of dove backwards towards the ball, then proceeded to get a triple play. I ended up winning. We watched the replay of my triple play for like 30 minutes. It was so unbelievable. Finally, my brother, we went to a house party and got hammered. We were playing quarters, the game where you bounce quarters off a table into a shot glass. I don't even remember the rules, I just remember doing that. Looking around the table there was a dude with a paper bag on his head and another dude with a lampshade on. Everyone was hammered. My brother says if I land this, you all have to chug hard liquor. If I lose I'll do it and proceeds to fill glasses with hard liquor. He puts down two shot glasses and everyone is thinking no way he'll land two. He then tilts his head back and puts the quarters over his eyes. Slams his head forward and lands both quarters in both shot glasses. Table erupts. Chairs are thrown backwards and broken. Eruption of screaming. I ended up blacking out thanks to the large amounts of beef eater I drank that night. Was playing football. Soccer. In a park with about 6-7 friends when a family walked by and the eldest daughter who must have been at least 20 shouted that if that freaking ball comes near me, I will pop it. I considered this to be completely rude and uncalled for as we were just playing a nice game in the middle of a park. As the family walked away I could see her walking like she was some freaking awesome bee for telling off a group of kids so I thought to myself, I'll teach that bee. So I took the ball in my hands and kicked it towards her assuming, 
because I'm not at all athletic or skilled at sports, that it would go nowhere near her. But by some divine intervention it conked her straight on the head from 50 yards away. The rest of the family laughed really hard at her so she was too embarrassed to steal the ball and pop it and her dad threw it back to us. Back when I was new to Street Fighter, my friend invited me to a tourney. The thing is, I didn't know how to play. I won by mashing buttons. $200. I can never do that again even if I try. A lot of times people who are very serious try to counter other strategies with fire own. You don't have one it throws off their game. In a game where every combo has a counter someone just flailing around can't be predicted. I guessed an activation code for a flight simulator 98 game I stole. No joke. As kids me and a friend did this for Warcraft or something. We had a used key code and changed some of the characters by 1. 7 is greater than 8. E. F. When it worked we thought we had cracked the code for life and tried it on a bunch of other games. Never worked again. One of the first times I played Zombies Call of Duty Online I made it to level 40. I tried and tried many times later and never made past 30. I don't even want to think about level 40 in Zombies. Once you get to about 20 to it's just point forward and hold the trigger until the round ends. I swatted a bee with my hand, and somehow removed its head. I am the king of the north. As a side note, the body kept moving for like another 15 minutes. That twitch made me nervous. I live next to a golf course, so when golf balls fly into our yard, I hit them back. One day I had two balls fly in. So I took my 7 iron and instead of flying over back to the golf course, I smacked it right into a telephone pole and the ball came flying back at me. I had to swat it away with my left hand. I kinda chuckled and hit the second ball and same exact thing happened. Not me but I was in a musical a few years ago and one of the characters had to drop some coins. All goes well for the first few nights then one night he drops them and one rolls down the stairs and halfway down the theater to the audience whereupon it stops at the feet of a three. Ishiro old girl who at this point realizes that she is the chosen one and has magic powers and screams loudly and excitedly for quite some time. Yay. I played hockey when I was younger and I was terrible. I was a fourth line forward who maybe scored one garbage goal a season. I was skating out of my zone and I shot the puck from center ice to go on a line change and I ended up sniping it top right side. I didn't even see the puck go in because immediately after I shot it I was skating to the bench to complete the change. I was sitting at a park with friends when a group of kids pulled up, got out, and started throwing water balloons at us. Somehow, absolutely none of them popped. I grabbed one that landed beside me. As they were speeding off, I hurled it at them from about 30 yards away. It went directly through their sunroof, drenching the interior of the car. I was about 5 years old and was on a turtle kick. Told my mom I wanted a baby turtle. She told me to go find one. It was more of a go play outside kind of thing to keep me busy. Walked down through the woods into the creek. Came back 5 minutes later with a baby turtle about the size of a half dollar. Still remember the look of shock on my mom's face when I walked back in the house with it. I was probably 13 or so. I had my right elbow on my desk in school with a pencil between my fingers and I was half raising my hand. A friend of mine was dicking around and decided to throw a pen at my pencil holding hand. The pen he threw knocked my pencil out of my fingers and stuck between them, essentially replacing the pencil with the pen. He was probably about 15 feet away or so. My mouth fired saliva out like water gun once. No idea why. I thought I was a Pokemon. At my ex-GF's new loft apartment, two stories with the main living area, kitchen, etc downstairs, and the bedroom upstairs with a half wall. I used to throw things off her upstairs wall at her cat, socks, primarily. One day I had a nickel in my pocket and I noticed an open, half full Snapple bottle on the other side of the room, downstairs, about 15 feet away, and 10 feet below me. I asked if she bet me I couldn't make it in. She humored me and said sure, what's the bet? I said if I missed, I'll never throw anything downstairs again. And if I made it, she had to blow me and swallow. She hated it. Right then and there on the couch. Also hated doing anything on the couch. She accepted. I fully expected to miss. But I lined up. Did a couple fake pumps. And threw it. 
Two seconds later, you heard the perfect clink and curse bloosh I ran around the apartment celebrating like I got the game winning goal in OT in game 7 of the Stanley Cup, and she even paid up. What is the biggest coincidence you have ever experienced? I was living in CA, my best friend lives near Portland, we both got out of our car at the same cafe at the same time 250 miles from his house and 700 miles from mine. At first we were both like hi then we realized that we weren't meeting each other there and it was a massive coincidence. A buddy of mine and I were helping a good friend of ours move from New Jersey to Los Angeles by car. We stopped at Chili's in Barstow, California. We ran into my friends, not the one moving. First girlfriend from 7 years prior. It turns out she was also moving to Los Angeles from New Jersey. Met a guy at a brewery in California. We both grew up in the same city, had the same job, had the same connecting flight, and had the same name. My wife and I got married in 1990. It was quite a small wedding. Just family and close friends, including my wife's former history teacher, retired. In 1994 we went for lunch at history teacher's house. He had some local books about our county during D-Day preparations. June 1944, in which I showed interest. He said I could borrow them if I wanted to. I said no thanks cause my mum had told me her recollections of D-Day from when she was a child and lived in a small forest village in southern England. He asked me what village and it turns out he was a cacketed there as a child at the start of World War II. We found out he was my mum's next door neighbour in the 1940s in this small village and had a crush on one of my mum's older sisters at the time. The sad thing is that he and that particular aunt were both at my wedding in 50 years later, in 1990 but no one knew of the connection. I changed jobs and knew if I didn't change my number. Employees at the old job would call me whenever they needed help. Like a year later, at my new job, a new girl hears my less than common name and says is there any chance you used to have a phone number xxxxxxxxxxxxx. I'm like... Uh, yeah, she says she gets like 5 calls a week of people asking for me. Crap, that means you are good as frick at your job. Good for you. Back in the 80s, when I was in college, my roommate and I are sitting in our apartment, listening to an album by the police, you know, that band Sting used to be in. Our neighbor from two doors down knocks on our door, and I open it. He gets a weird look on his face. He asks me to step outside. The guy who lived in the apartment between us had his door open. We could hear the same police album, same song, at the same point in the song. The album? Synchronicity, of course. Snowboarding of pissed on the wrong side of a mountain located about 500 kilometers from my hometown. We end up on a small road in the middle of nowhere and have to walk 2 kilometers back to the lifts and civilization. The only car we meet on this road was my art teacher honking and waving. 15 years ago and I can still remember the what, the, frick moment my friend and I had. The bastard didn't even give us a lift. Best ending ever. Wore a Dota 2 shirt to a convention. Random artist says he does Dota commissions as I walk by. Strike up a conversation about Dota heroes. Mention my friend Mike plays Juggernaut a lot. He also has a friend named Mike he met at college who played a lot of Juggernaut. It turns out the random artist who decided to talk to me is someone I had been playing Dota with for months but never met in person. This is awesome. When I broke the screen on my phone when I was in secondary school, about 12 years ago, I took it to this little independent phone shop to fix it. The guy fixed it perfectly but unbeknownst to me he stole my SD card. Being an awkward teenager I didn't want to confront him also I didn't really need the SD card so I went about with my life. A couple of months later I got an SD card in my Christmas stocking, and my dad explained he got it from the shop. It was my old one with all my photos and videos still on it. It also still had my collection of pee still on it. When I was in college, this really stupid joke spread like wildfire in my dorm. Do you know that whenever there's an awkward silence, someone thinks about Abraham Lincoln? Really? No. But now you will. The next week, I went to a religious conference in a different city. I was making small talk with some new acquaintances, and the conversation ran its course, leaving us in an awkward silence. 
Of course I remember that dumb joke, and at that very moment, from across a very large and rather crowded room, I lock eyes with an Abraham Lincoln impersonator. And no, there was absolutely no reason for someone dressed as Abraham Lincoln to be there. And yes, he was unmistakably supposed to be Abraham Lincoln, from the stovepipe hat to the beard to the old Timmy clothes. That's hilarious. I lost my id, and it was returned to me in person by a stranger at a party in a different city a few days later. We both happened to have some mutual friends there and he recognized me from my picture. Sounds like you got DENN I said. My girlfriend from high school in Ohio walked up and said hello to me, completely out of the blue, 8 years later, on the street, in San Jose, Costa Rica. I went for a job interview with the company next door to the company I was supposed to have one with by accident. They also happened to be recruiting. They interviewed me despite being a little confused by my presence and it only emerged afterwards that I had interviewed at the wrong place. They were in the web development field and the company I was supposed to interview with did mainly mobile app dev and a bit of web on the side so the stuff I prepared and portfolio were suitable for both really. Pro tip employers. List your actual company name on your ads not just the address, especially if multiple businesses are based in the same building. <laughs> Flying back to Florida from Tanzania with a layover in New York, I had to open my suitcase as I went through security. On top of the clothing pile was one of my shoes instead of two. I took everything out of my suitcase looking for the other shoe. It was nowhere to be found. I haphazardly put my stuff back into the suitcase, resigned to the fact that I would have to discard the lone shoe. When I arrived at home and opened my suitcase, right on top of the pile of my clothes, side by side, were both of my shoes. Lost my dinner jacket once. Three people looked over all of the various pockets and compartments of my jacket and didn't find my id. Six months later I put the jacket on and checked the pockets. My id was there. My connecting flight was delayed, so I found another flight. That one was supposed to take off two hours ago, but a delay allowed me to catch it. Once I got to my seat my ex-boyfriend, who lived in another state and I haven't seen in 80 years, was seated next to me. Very awkward flight. Yikes. I can picture the awkwardness of this vividly. I was on a backpacking trip and I came across a couple of people doing a horse packing trip in the back country. I stopped to chat with them for a minute and realized that one of them had been my best friend in junior high until her family moved away. We were multiple states away from where we grew up and in the middle of nowhere, and this was decades after we lost touch. It was a little surreal. In high school I walked into class. Saw one of my friends, snapped both fingers and did a double trigger finger point at her while making a popping noise with my mouth. She also did the exact same series of motions to me at the exact same time. It was like it was our secret handshake or something except I had never done that before, nor saw anyone do it, nor know why I felt compelled to do it, but it happened. A friend and I have for years routinely had similar aches pains, injuries that one of us can't account for how we achieved them. These include examples are from mutual friends of ours seeing or hearing us comment on an injury then seeing or hearing the other comment on similar injury around the same time all in last month or so. Most recently I gave blood, she had what looked like a big bite on her arm. She gets horribly sick, I felt woozy, I get a huge bruise on my ribs from longsword fencing, she gets large mysterious bruise on her ribs. She hits her shin on a coffee table. I comment to my girlfriend that wow my shin hurts. I hurt my finger falling. She called me to ask me if I had hurt it because her finger had started hurting badly. As a kid I had this imaginary friend named Kelly that I would talk about all the time. I come home from my first day of kindergarten and my mom asks me if I made any friends. I start telling her about this girl named Kelly and of course my mom assumes it's this imaginary friend. Nope. She finds out my friend at school is really named Kelly and we had never met before. The kicker was we found out we had the exact same birthday. We were born about 12 hours apart in the same hospital. My best friend and I were about to board a flight home from Florida and she told me she heard someone say my name, which is very uncommon. So I thought she was kidding. Nope. Turns a kid from my homeroom who is also her next door neighbor was on the same plane. I met my wife the year before I met my wife. Running into somebody at a local gas station that was commenting on my reddit thread. 
Sorry but that's gotta be BS. P.S. Hurry up and decide if you want the promotional Twix. I was in the psych ward a couple times when I was younger. The first time I was there I made friends with a girl named Bethany. A few years pass and I end up in the psych ward again. Bethany was there. She arrived the day before. Was looking through a photo album at my then new girlfriend's parents house. Came across a photo of her dated the exact same day I was born. She's 3 years older. Not one other photo in the entire album had a date on it. That was neat. We've been together 23 years. Married for 19. Many years ago I went on a night out with a friend and on the way we stopped off to pick up one of his other friends. We hung around in his lounge while we waited for him to get ready and his wife was watching the newly released Terminator on VHS. Fast forward to about 15 years ago and I went to view a house that I was interested in buying. I got a feeling of deja vu and it took me a while to realize that it was the same house we had picked the guy up from all those years ago. I ended up buying the place. I still live here today. And on the day we moved in I got the TV set up and switched it on to find the Terminator playing from the same point when we left for our night out. I remember the part because it was the sex scene and we all waited for it to finish before we left. So it turns out you would be back. Worked next to this person at a small dental lab for about 2 years. Got along great even though the job was crappy. She got let go. Then me about a year later. 5 years pass and I'm at this much better company. One day they tell me I have a new co-worker and they'll be right next to me. It was the same person. I was living in London and my best friend came over to visit me from the small town I am from in Canada. We were sitting in a pub and lo and behold, in walks a guy from our childhood soccer team in Canada. We ended up having drinks with him. Still blows my mind. I met this girl at a party and asked for her phone number. This was about 30 years ago. She gave it to me and I thought she was joking around because her number was just one number different from mine. My mother didn't know I was dating Gil. Mom accidentally dialed the wrong number, Jill's, and asked to speak to me. I was there, at the other end of her wrong number. I never really called my brother, not that we weren't close. We'd just catch up a few times a year when I went home for a visit. We're a very close family who enjoys each other's company. One morning I decided to to give him a call. One of his roommates answered and I asked for him. They asked me who was calling. Odd, but okay. It's JB. Silence for a few seconds. JB he can't come to the phone I'll tell him you called. Okay, go out for the day. Get home and my roommate tells me in a somber voice, there's a message for you. This was before cell phones. Check the message. JB it's mom, your brother died. Went to back home for the funeral and met with his friends. I told them I called that day why didn't anyone tell me. Apparently the police had just arrived and they took the call. When he told them it was JB they thought it was a friend with the same name. Didn't even think it was me since I had never called him before. Call your family folks. There may not be a next time. My parents met in India. Twice. They were both travelers. My dad was in India. Ran into my mom. They were friends but lost contact. My mom went back to the Netherlands. My dad flew to Indonesia. Mom went back to India 3 years later where she ran into my dad again who had been in Asia for 3 years. They met in the same city twice. On a school trip to Italy. 2009. Some background information. I am originally from Bermuda, but I attended high school in a small town in Pennsylvania. My school organized a school trip to Greece and the Greek islands for spring break. However, since our group was not big enough, our trip was changed to Greece and Italy. I was a little upset about it because I really wanted to see those islands. Now for the story. On the Thursday before my group would head back to the States, our scheduled visit was supposed to be the Colosseum. However, when we got there, it was closed because the workers were on strike or something. Anyway, we hopped back on the tour bus and went back to the hotel. My teachers decided that we would head back there on Friday. But since it was our free day, we didn't have our tour bus. I really did not want to go. I was considering faking sick and staying in my room the whole day. However, I begrudgingly headed down to join my group. 
I really did not want to go anywhere on that day. I was exhausted, and I needed to recharge. We took the subway to the Colosseum, but had to wait because one of the guys from our group got stuck behind a turnstile and missed the train. I was still pretty salty about being there. We got into the structure, and it was beautiful. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. I took some photos. I pictured what it was like during its heyday. I was less salty by this time but still very tired. As we were leaving, I had to go to the bathroom. The rest of my group went ahead to take more pictures and I dragged myself to the restrooms. When I came out, I felt kinda weird. I recall. I went to rejoin my group and I saw this boy who looked familiar but I couldn't put my finger on it. Then, all of a sudden, I heard this high-pitched, blood-curdling scream from a girl making a beeline toward me. I returned a scream and threw myself at her. It was my best friend from middle school in Bermuda. She had just arrived in Rome that day with her school trip group. The boy I recognized was a kid that was on my debate team many years before in primary school. That moment made my entire day. I perked up and happily walked all over Rome with a smile that day. I was riding on high of such an awe-inspiring coincidence. That TL, DR, came straight from BuzzFeed. I moved to a new school my junior year and when I was walking the halls to get to my next class I bumped into my biology teacher from the previous year. We both moved to the same school but for different reasons. Different reasons. Yeah, you probably went there to learn and he went there to teach. Went to rehab in Florida. Not exactly a fun time in my life so you make friends with those around you who understand what you're going through and don't judge you. I made friends with a cool guy in my house. We hung out a lot while there and we're actually pretty good friends. Got along well. I got discharged before him and we promised to stay in touch. I was going back home and he was planning on staying in Florida. I started using again almost as soon as I got out and I was ashamed to contact him because I didn't want to tell him I relapsed. Didn't talk to him again after I left that day. About 7 months later it was time for me to go to rehab again. This time I decided to go in Pennsylvania. When you get there it's a very dark time. At least for me. Feeling so alone and kicking yourself for getting in this situation again. Basically life is pretty crappy. I was still in the detox unit so I didn't get out much in the community. I walk outside for a cigarette and I see a familiar face smoking near me. It was my friend from Florida. He had started using again also obviously. It made me feel so much better to see him and I have stayed in contact with him this time and cleaned my life up significantly. It blew my mind. The odds of us running into each other in another rehab over 1000 miles away must be astronomical. It was crazy. My friend and I rented an apartment together. I let him have the parking spot in exchange for the master bedroom. He asked me what is the parking spot number so I told him. He looked super confused and asked me again. Then, he took the leasing papers from me. It ends up, the parking spot number was the last four of his social. Two stories that actually originate to the same camp. Story 1. Last year, I studied abroad and didn't know anyone on the trip. I was pushing my boundaries this way because I needed it. Fast forward to the point I land in Prague for the first time. I get off the plane and my program has arranged for buses to pick us up from the airport. The buses pick up a group of 10-15 and we're all pretty much strangers. Basically, when we got to the airport, about 50-60 of us were split into groups of 10-15 to take us to our apartments. On our bus, we're all making small talk asking where we're all from. Me being from the northeast, I was pleased to meet these people from all over the country. Then one girl, who is super attractive, mentions she's from Massachusetts which is close to where I'm from. Naturally I was drawn to her so we begin talking more and I find out we went to camp together like 10 years ago. We literally went to water parks and stuff together 10 years prior, but we didn't recognize each other. Story 2. About a few weeks ago, I'm in Burlington, VT purchasing a snowboard. I was shopping around about 5 stroke 6 different places trying to find the best deal when I land on this small but great shop. I end up asking one of the workers to help me find the best snowboard for me because I have wide feet and I'm a little on the larger side. We spend about 10 minutes just going back and forth about snowboards and stuff when he noticed my necklace. I wear a star of David around my neck, but I usually make sure it's hidden because you never know who you're going to meet. I've met my fair share of anti-semites. So when he pointed out my necklace, 
I kind of shied away and put it under my sweatshirt and then he goes oh no, I'm one of you bro and showed me his necklace. After he showed me it, I recognized the necklace and him. We went to camp together 10 years ago, the same camp as that girl. It's weird to see him again because the camp served kids from all over the northeast, from New Jersey to as far as Canada. I asked him what he's been up to and it turned out that after high school, he took a year off and traveled abroad and was now going to UVM. It's just a small world as long as you poke your head out every now and then. So cool to see old friends doing well. What is the rarest thing you have ever come across in your life? Serious. I saw two blind men walk into each other in the street, apologize and carry on, without realizing their other was blind. Slightly related, I saw two people in wheelchairs do the awkward go left, go right, try to go around each other but both accidentally go the same way dance on a crowded street once, in wheelchairs. It was funnier knowing that they're both accustomed to people making room for them on the sidewalk. We moved around a lot as a kid. My sisters and I went to an elementary public school, and then a catholic school for a few years, then moved about 300 miles away and went to public schools for the rest of our school ages. I always remember this girl with glasses who wore her hair in a bun no matter what school we were in. I just always thought a girl that looked like this existed in school. When I was about 21 or 22, I was in a university film class in a San Marcos, Texas and I get to talking to my group partner. Turns out she was the girl I remembered. She went first to my public elementary school, then to my private catholic school, then moved 300 miles away and attended the same elementary, middle, and high school, and was now in my class in college. As in the old Aztec legend, I once actually saw an eagle, snake in its talons, land on a cactus. Immediately I thought yes, I must build my empire here. I used to live in a student city where a lot of bikes get stolen. When I was 16, my bike was stolen and when I was 19, another bike was stolen. Because my father was pee about it, I was constantly on the lookout for my bike. Lo and behold, 4 months later, I spotted my bike in the city, near the train station. It had someone else's lock attached to it, called the police and waited. They showed up fairly quickly, confirmed from the police report that it was indeed my bike and cut open the lock. I had my bike back, yay. Now with bike in hand, I keep walking. Not 100 meters further, I spot the bike that got stolen several years ago. Same procedure, call the police, they return. They're a bit suspicious, but due to the unique characteristics on the bike that I described in the police report after it got stolen, a crack in a certain place, tires different brands, etc. They have to admit that this too is my stolen bike. They cut open another lock and I walk home with my two bikes. Crazy. Wonder if the two thieves called the cops too. A coin from the reign of Heraclius, Emperor of Byzantium, 610, 641 stroke 2 AD. It was a fragile little piece of metal so rusted it appeared black. Every time I held it, I had the overwhelming urge to snap it in half for some reason, so I moved it on quickly. I brought my kayak to the Indian River Lagoon in Florida on Memorial Day of 2013. The iral during the summer months can become bioluminescent, dinner flagellates in the water glow bright blue green when disturbed, and last year it was an aquatic lichow. As I was paddling at 2am there was a fin that came straight towards my boat and then disappeared underneath me and slapped the bottom of my kayak. That was a shark. But later there was a pod of dolphins that started teaching a baby dolphin how to fish along the shore. These dolphins came within 2 feet of me and I could see them perfectly glowing bluish green in the water. I actually watched the dolphins herd fish and with every paddle of their tail the water exploded like lightning. They hung around and fished for hours as I marveled. It was a natural phenomena that I don't know if I'll ever witness again but it was certainly the most rare and beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. I have one of the original great wave prints done by Hokusai. Saw a chunk of rock enter the atmosphere at 3am one morning. 
It came from the south then about 1 stroke 8 across the sky it went bright red and lit everything up in an eerie red. It looked like an incredibly massive firework. A massive pillar of smoke trailed behind it as it was traveling north. It was amazingly loud and broke up into about 10 pieces towards the north side of the sky and faded into nothing. The sound, the brightness I only wish I shared that moment with someone. No description will ever do it justice. I've commented about this before, but as a kid I interviewed Neil Armstrong as part of a project. He rarely gave interviews, and the only way I was able to do so was because he was friends with my grandfather. He was a really nice guy, and was really willing to help. My mother has an old Coca-Cola glass syrup jug that lists cocaine as an ingredient. While backpacking I got to see several of a bird that, until recently, was thought to be extinct. A friend of mine was showing me pictures of a trip of his to New Zealand, and I was in the background of one of them. This was around 6 years before we even met. Not something I can collect, but definitely something that will probably never happen to me again. This reminds me of that couple that found each other in the background of a childhood picture from Disney World. I saw a sigmoid volvulus, when a portion of a colon twists around itself and starts to die, which is rare to begin with, in a lady that had it for over 6 months. It was necrotic and in a shell of fibrous tissue and for some reason the dying portion hadn't ruptured thanks to the fibrous shell and was still able to move along stool from the pressures of the unaffected part of the colon. The 70 year old surgeon that was operating with me says he had never seen or heard of anything like this and convinced me to do a poster presentation on it. At the conference I presented at, every single surgeon that saw my poster said they have never heard or seen of one before and some were hesitant to believe me until they saw the pictures. After an extensive 4 month literature search I couldn't find a single case that came close. Next stop is the annals of surgery which already expressed interest in this case. So technically I've seen something no one else has seen before. I've seen ball lightning. I can only describe it as a camera flash but moving in ball form. It whizzed right by me. I am a coin dealer and collector. I think the lowest mintage coin I have owned was 950. It was a mad proof Lincoln cent. I have held $300,000 to $500,000 coins. Those are always fun. A fully intact coral horn fossil from the Order Vision era that I found in a stream. Last set of cams from Ferrari factory for 1967 275 GTB4. A perfect and intact ammonite fossil about 5 inches across. My father is big on fossils. This story always makes me happy and I hope it doesn't get buried. A few winters ago in the aftermath of a super shitty snowstorm, I found a dog, a tiny chihuahua mix, very nervous and a little aggressive. Seemingly abandoned I knocked on the door of the house he was in front of, without even asking any questions. The guy who answered immediately said he wasn't his dog, Bulls. I felt bad for him so me and my ex scooped him up and headed for an animal rescue center nearby. Shout out to Bobby and the strays in Atlas Park Mall. They took him in and that was that. Until about 2 years later when I see an insanely similar dog in Manhattan. I went up to the owner and asked where she found him. She mentioned how he was found abandoned in Queens and was brought into a shelter for rescue. I told her I was the one who actually found the dog and how glad I was that she opened up her home to him. The craziest twist of fate ever. An original Edison wax cylinder record player, with the speaker cone thing and several wax cylinders as well. We were tearing down an old barn on my grandma's farm property and found it in a tack room. Among some other cool old things like school desks and an ice box, which my dad and I restored and turned into a bookcase. I guess I don't know how rare they actually are, but I would assume it's rare to find them in pretty good condition, along with cylinders that aren't cracked or broken. Many years ago, a friend's mother owned one in excellent condition. Said friend decided to pull it apart to see how it worked, ended up getting tossed. Also had another friend who bought a Model A Ford and cut the top off with a hacksaw to make a convertible. Ran it without oil and seized the engine. Some people have no idea what they've got. I went on a trip to Australia with my parents when I was 13. We took a plane to Alice Springs. We took a camping car. We were heading to Darwin. And went to Kings Canyon before going to Uluru and then heading north. After walking 4 hours we get to a water hole to swim in. Who do I see? My history teacher, Mindblown. 
probably not rare, but as a kid on vacation with family at Yosemite Park, there was a massive cloud of big ass butterflies. We were hiking then all of a sudden just tons of black and orange butterflies. So many that I couldn't see my hands in front of me. It lasted maybe 20 or 30 seconds. But never again have I ever seen so many butterflies at one time. I always assumed it must have been a yearly breeding thing. But I really don't know. I had this happen once. I was driving home from school. And all of a sudden. Thousands of butterflies went flying by. Sadly we were on the freeway. We were headed west and they were headed south. Wasn't as pretty as much as it was disgusting and sad. Splat. Cringe. Splat splat splat. I used to go fossil hunting on the Isle of Wight. A well known place for this sort of thing. I went in this group of people. Searching for the fossils. And one of the kids. Must have been under 10. Went up the cliff a little bit. Did some digging. Then came back with something. He asked the tour guide what it was. And the guide became speechless. It was an extremely rare fossil. And I remember hearing a news story a couple weeks later saying that it was something that excited archaeologists. I like to think that they named the fossil after the kid. I've seen a dropped penny land perfectly on its edge. Me and my then boyfriend watched a movie called Svina Longorna only to realize we had both been extras in the movie 5 years before we met. We even sat next to each other in the background. I heard my guinea pig singing. And no, not their usual adorable weaking. I thought a bird had gotten into the house and was chirping. After owning GPs off and on for 10 plus years I'd never heard their song. Apparently it is pretty rare to hear. Double awesome event. As a kid, I used to go to this village where some of my family lived in Greece. It was up in the mountains. And one day I got incredibly bored and decided to go fossil hunting with my father. We were just looking at some rocks at the side of the road when I saw something that actually looked interesting. It was fairly big rock that looked like it had tubes of stone coming out of it. Turns out it was part of an ancient sea animal burrow from the Cambrian. 500 million years ago, we found loads of other things. More burrows, ancient coral, and shells. Just as we were about to leave, we saw another rock in front of us and collected it, and I was nearly bitten by a 10 cm long bright orange giant centipede thing. Fantastic. Working on my dissertation at uni, I did paleontology, and while sifting through sediment I'd broken down came across what appears to be a late Jurassic avian tooth. You don't see a lot of those in southern England. An albino male deer, horns and all, standing on a hill. The white stag, beware the wild hunt. I collect vintage Pyrex kitchenware, mostly from the 40s through the 60s. Once, at a church rummage sale, I found a 7 inches square clear glass baking dish with an unusual, primitive Pyrex logo on the bottom for $1. I bought it, and after doing some research, I was able to date it to around 1915. It is approaching its 100th birthday. I love imagining the women who use this throughout the decades. My mom has inherited the cookware of my grandma, who inherited the cookware of her mom. We still use all of it Pyrex doesn't get used up but I sometimes think about how many dinners and holidays that stuff has been involved in. I have a small piece of agate, probably used as a seal or on a ring, carved with the symbol of one of the members from the Order of the Garter, but I do not know which member as I have not been able to find any info about it. I have taken it to antiques dealers who say it is likely genuine. The stone itself is worth several hundred or dollar sign. I believe it was looted during World War II. Today I went to an old engineer's house and got to see a Kurter calculator, an Orden bomb sight, an Edison phonograph and Edison light bulb. He also had a few million dollars of machinery in his workshop including a water jet cutter, CNC mill, CNC, lathe, jig borer, brake press, hydraulic press, laser welder, spot welder, induction heater, and a bunch more things I didn't recognize. My friend has heterochromia and she was born on the 29th of February. I always saw that as a pretty rare, and cool, combination. When my husband and I were snorkeling on the barrier reef, the guide became really excited. He'd noticed that a particular fish was engaged in a mating ritual, and he said that witnessing this was really rare. He was beside himself with excitement. I don't even remember the name of the fish. We saw so many awesome fish that day that the scaly bastards all melded together.
Oh, I couldn't think of anything until you said this. When I was very young, my parents took me to a zoo with a white tiger and a normal tiger. My dad has footage somewhere of them beginning to mate. He either realizes what he's recording and quickly stops. I've made fun of him for this a couple times. You have been visited by the doggo beer master. Comment delicious so you always have beer in your life. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.